So with, uh, with meditation, it, it's something for me that I have in the past experimented with a lot. I think humans naturally want to alter our state of consciousness. Uh, even when I was a kid at school, I remember just trying to meditate myself into a new realm or, or universe, just this urge that I had to change my consciousness, to experience something other than myself. And I think this is a very human thing. It's throughout millennia, right? We find drugs, music, dance, various forms of meditation, pain, etc., to alter our consciousness. And the thing with meditation is that I think a lot of us think that it's healing, that by doing meditation in the way that, that most, that's sort of the more popular ways um, is a healing thing. I guess it de depends on how you define healing, but I mean, I spent a long time meditating the more in the more popular way, the Vipassana um, type stuff, where it's it's more just about the breath, where you place awareness on the the breath. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that it's been dressed up as though it's healing, as though it progresses you. There is, I remember at the times when I have been doing this type of meditation, it does seem to do something in terms of, there's a sort of quicker reaction to become mindful, you could say but that's not necessarily a good thing. I know it's sold as a good thing, but I don't believe it necessarily is. Because if we look at the, the core of the issue, in my opinion, is emotions. And f when we're young, we just can't handle our own emotions. We think they're gonna kill us. We're scared of our parents. We can't handle it. We grieve and we can't handle it. We, we do whatever we do to try to block the emotions. We hold them in, et cetera, et cetera. And then we carry this throughout our lives, this inability to feel certain emotions in certain areas of the body. And they're so strongly guarded and it's so strongly repressed that we simply don't even know that they're there. They manifest as an internal vibration. You know, when you look at someone and you or let's say, for example, um, you say you don't like being around someone because they're angry a lot. That for me would suggest some kind of anger repression because it's vibrating something that you, makes you uncomfortable, generally. Just stuff like that. And, and we don't know it's there, we just behave. It, it controls our lives where we avoid things, we don't do things, we don't say things. We do jobs or go places or form relationships or do hobbies that are basically trying to unconsciously avoid or control our inner repressions. Our whole lives are just constructed based on this. Things that we can barely even see, but it's still happening because of what makes you feel uncomfortable. And meditating, is going to make this is is going to do nothing in the standard way that people say to do it is not simply not going to help you because some of the most popular meditation advice even the oldest meditation advice is to place consciousness on the stomach or the breath in some fashion and just hold it there if you get a thought recognize the thought and bring it back to the, the, the object of meditation. So let's break this down. Something comes up, we see that thing, we ignore it or we push it away or we just don't be with the thing and then we go back to the breath. Something comes up, we, we don't be with it, we, kept, we go back to the breath. So this in a very subtle and pernicious way 
is reinforcing repression, is reinforcing the human illness, you could say, or failure, the human failure of we just aren't able to sit with the emotions. We have this massive, I mean, even the, even the term presence, it's associated with meditation. And presence can subtly hint or even directly hint at resting awareness upon awareness, right? Or being present with who you're with or whatever you're doing, just do that. But for me, again, that advice can be very subtly repressive because it's saying, ignore what's really going on inside you. Try to extrovert yourself into the world and be present with that. Be present with your breath. They say it's internal, but again, it's not really facing what's happening. What's happening is really what's happening. So what's happening in your mind? What are your thoughts really doing? Let them do what they want to do. The same with your emotions and the tensions in the body. It's there. We don't like it. We don't know what it's saying. We don't know what to do with it, but we ignore it. And some ways that I have lifted my own, some of my own repressions, which was a grief. I was a very big grief repressor was um, just by being conscious of it for long amounts of time. It was many, many months where I became conscious of this shame sensation uh, in, in the stomach. And I just did nothing with it except be aware of it. Wherever I was, whatever I did, the second I woke up, falling asleep, I was just, I could not, I could not get my mind off it. It was awful. I can't even describe how awful it was. But many months, I think it was three to six months, eventually I was able, I'd had a f series of experiences that allowed me to, to grieve very deeply, very childish things, very, yeah, very, very childish things were coming up. And then a lot of it is gone, a massive chunk of it is gone. And I sort of became in many ways a new person that experiences myself and the world in a much different way. And I know there's a lot of techniques out there and I know this and that when it comes to trauma and repression, which I'm not sure they're even two different things, but anyway, that's for another video. But this method for me was the most simple and it for some reason worked, it just took a long time and it was very painful, but I just feel that it was necessary that you just find out what's happening now and you just be aware of it for as long as you need to be in every moment. And that's real presence. That's the only thing that's gonna heal. In a, in a, he in a true healing way, if we look at like, you can learn techniques, you can learn how to be more confident, more social, um, different ways of saying things and conducting yourself and working harder, working differently, being more efficient, making better, kind, all this kind of technical outer stuff. And it may, give you a life that's functionally better on the outside. You may even get physically stronger. You may even be able to face things outside of you. You may get more money, more friends, all that stuff, but you're not going to change inside. You'll be the same person. And in my experience, the only thing that's actually going to heal and make you grow and become fundamentally more be fundamentally more well, you could say, is identifying these emotions that we're ignoring, these places in the body where we're storing them. And the first step is to become aware of it. And it's a very long process, but it really just starts with being present, but being truly present with everything. If there's tension in your body, just be there with it for as long as it takes. If there is 
sadness in the stomach, if there's anger in the, in the face, if there's ang like fear in the chest, whatever you identify is what you identify, is what your body is saying, look at me. And then just be with it for many months, many years, whatever it takes. And that's, that's the simplest technique that has worked for me. There's many others to do with thoughts and words and, and stuff pictures and, and things, but it gets, it gets a bit too much in my opinion. And a lot of it, it works for some people, doesn't work for others, but it seems like this kind of technique is fairly consistent where just try to be present, truly present with what is happening in your mind and body now. So if, if there's certain thoughts you're having, just think them, let them go as far as they want to go. If you need to visualize killing someone, if you need to visualize um, yelling at someone, if you need to visualize doing crazy shit that you never thought you, you would do, obviously I'm not saying to do them. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is for whatever reason is trapped in your body and it wasn't able to be expressed when you were young and it now it wants to be expressed, but you keep ignoring it. We keep ignoring that what our body is crying out for us to give it, which is attention. Let it do what it needs to do. Whatever's the most surface thing that you experience all the time, maybe you're constantly anxious, maybe you're angry, maybe you're sad, whatever it is, we all have our preferred. Usually it's the opposite that is the repressed. So if for me, I anger for me is very easy, but my my seems like my primary repressed emotion was grief. I found it very hard to cry in my life. So the I just found it safer to be angry. You could also say the anger protected the vulnerability of the stored grief in the body. But some people say that they're more fearful, anxious and sad or, or depressed. Um, that generally can suggest that it's anger that's being hidden in the body somewhere. So but just start with what's there with you. And if, you want, if you're sad, then just be as fucking sad as you can be. If you're angry, be as angry as you can be. Just sit with it for as long as it takes. It eventually reveals what's under it, which is generally the, generally the opposite of it. You can get so sad that you become furious or you can get so angry that you can't stop crying. This will happen, but it just starts with the many months process of being aware of it and it will just uncover so many things you will see things that you can't unsee and once you see them it, it just it, it ruined my life for a while even though it was always there I just became aware of it and it was completely debilitating really crazy <laughs> then eventually, now I don't really, it, it's still there. I still find myself feeling this sense of wanting to hide sometimes, but it's not like before. Before it was this overwhelming, powerful, powerful shame that was always there, making me want to run and hide and just, but it's, it's definitely very significantly reduced. It, just because I had some very deep grieving sessions and it seemed to release a lot of it. And I believe there's more to go. I just have to figure out how to access it, which is pretty much exactly what I'm describing to you guys. So um, I'm working on this as well. But yeah, I think that's it guys. Cheers.